Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello, everybody. My name is Boone. Um, I am. Who am I? I am uh, by day an instructional designer at Queens College uh, in at the City University of New York. Um, in the evenings, I do development for a project that I'm going to show you in a second. And um, in my spare time, I'm writing a dissertation in philosophy. So, <laughs> all of that really qualifies me to be talking to you about Buddy Press. Um, so, well, how many how many of you in the in the room know Buddy Press? At least at least someone. How many of you consider yourselves devs? Just WordPress devs. Okay, good. That gives me an idea of, of how fast or slow to go here. Um, I kind of I'm pretty new to Buddy Press. Buddy Press is pretty new in itself. But let me start off by saying what Buddy Press is. Okay, Buddy Press is a plugin. Or really, it's a package of plugins, a set of about eight or nine plugins that work together to create um, what, what's sometimes called Facebook in a box. I think Jane called it that this morning. Um, yeah. These are already available. Yes, there are. They're already up on SlideShare. So if you want to follow along, you can. Um, oh, and by the way, I should say that I was planning to do live stuff on my dev environments um, until about an hour and a half ago when I realized that my computer wasn't going to work with the projector, so I threw this slideshow together in um, much haste. <laughs> so I apologize if it's not stylistically beautiful. Um, so, BuddyPress, a set of plugins that is Facebook in a box. It puts a social networking layer on top of a WordPress installation. Now, it used to be the case. Well, I guess still technically is the case that it needed to be a WordPress multi-user installation, but um, in the trunk of BuddyPress now, and in the upcoming version of BuddyPress, that won't be necessary anymore. And obviously, when you move on to BuddyPress 3.0, it will be one, or I'm sorry, WordPress 3.0, it'll be a single product anyway. So, it adds a couple of different things. It adds the ability to make friends. You've got multiple users on your site, they form friendship relations, a little bit like on Facebook. Extended profiles. This is beyond the standard profile stuff that you find in a WordPress installation. Groups. Anybody can form a group on any subject, um, and the groups have shared forums. They can have a shared blog. Um, they have a shared purpose. Forums. Um, BB Press is sort of really closely integrated with BuddyPress, so it's a nice forum software. And interactive activity streams. This is a little bit like the Facebook news feed, where all of the activity that happens on the site gets aggregated into this one spot, and you can comment on each other's activity, kind of have conversations right there in the feed. Here's an example. This is a big project I'm working on called the CUNY Academic Commons. Now, the CUNY Academic Commons is a site whose purpose is to bring together the myriad faculty, staff, administrators, graduate students at the City University of New York. And to give you a sense of what that means, <laughs> the City University of New York is 23 campuses all over the city of New York. It's got, depending on how you count students, it's got three, four, five hundred thousand students. So it's enormous. And there's a real need to sort of bring people together, um, especially people doing similar research in different parts of the university. So this site is, is sort of a social networking platform to bring those people together. BuddyPress, obviously, is a perfect fit for this sort of project because it provides all of the basic things that you need. So here I've given you just a little snippet of what the site looks like. This is my profile. Full name. You see what the extended profile looks like. Full name, college, titles, academic interests. And this is really where it gets powerful when you have interests that become, become linkable. If I click on the word philosophy, it does a search of the entire BuddyPress installation and returns all of the people on the installation who also listed philosophy as an interest. So a great way for people to connect to each other. Is this this product this yeah this site this site kind of is, it did a soft launch, we'll say in December. So it's online. It's not it's not being used by a ton of people. There's maybe seven or eight hundred users right now, but, uh, yeah. which is pretty big I mean, by certain standards. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how to get set up with BuddyPress. The nice thing about it is that it is Facebook in a box in the sense that it takes a minute to install or less. Uh, just you go to your you go to the WordPress repo and download it, or you just go to the add new plugin section on your WordPress dashboard, one click, and you're really done. Um, but I kind of want to walk through some of the ways that you can take the standard BuddyPress setup that you would get if you simply took it out of its box, and how you can really twist it around to act a little bit differently. I mean, if we look back at this, and you'll see when I show you the standard default templates in a second, at the Kinney Academic Commons, we're hewing relatively closely to the standard default layout of BuddyPress. But you don't have to do that. There are a lot of ways to 
break it up, make it look less like BuddyPress. That's what I'm going to talk about. So here's my case study, a rocking website. So let's say that I had a blog. This is all fictitious, of course, but let's say that I had a blog called Heavy Metal is Very, Very Good. And this was a blog that, let's say, I had been keeping for many years, simply for the purpose to sort of express my belief that heavy metal was a very, very good kind of music. Um, you can see some of my blog posts. This is just a standard. You know, I chose a black layout here because it's heavy metal, right? And so my, here's a recent post, how long is your hair? Long or very, very long. Um, here's another post about the movie, about the band Anvil. Okay, so I want to bring this website, bring my heavy metal blog into the 21st century by implementing a, social, a sort of social networking platform on top of it. I want to have a community where fans of heavy metal can come together and uh, communicate with each other, maybe talk about their favorite guitarists, maybe trade riffs, I don't know. Here's what happens when you install BuddyPress. This is the default theme for BuddyPress. And this, the installation process goes a little bit like this. You flip the switch in the back end, you know, you activate the plugin, and you're required to move a few theme files over. This won't, actually won't be true in future versions of PlayPress either, but you have to move, you have to manually move theme files from inside of the plugins folder into your themes folder. And then you activate your theme, and it looks a little bit like this. Now, this theme does not rock. Um, <laughs> I mean, let, let's remember what this looked like before. Black as black can be, black as the soul of Satan himself, <laughs> which is really, really perfect for a heavy metal website, I think. Um, BP defaults, it's got kind of a whimsical feel, and that doesn't really capture the feeling of the music. So let's talk about some ways in we can, that you, I'm going to take this default theme, and I'm going to break it apart in some really easy ways to make it reflect the shape of my community a little bit better. Thing number one, I can customize those fields. Let me go back to the, to the Kenya Academic Commons. Things like full name, that comes standard with an installation of BuddyPress. But the other sorts of questions that you might ask, the other sorts of fields that you might provide your community members so they can fill in their information, it's going to differ from community to community. So here we have things like academic interests. On my website, I don't care about academic interests. I care about things like, what's your favorite color? Black. What's your favorite shade of black? Midnight. <laughs> so you can fill whatever you want, and you've got all sorts of data data type options here. You've got drop down lists. You know, you can you can have radio buttons. You can have multiple checkboxes. So it's pretty slick. Let's talk about customizing components. <coughs> now, I'm going to go back to this. Sorry, again. Sorry about all the moving around. This is a new thing here. Um, there's a there's a variety of components for BuddyPress. You'll remember at the beginning I said that BuddyPress is made up <coughs> of a number of discrete plugins. There's one that um, aggregates blog activity. There's one that um, implements the ability to have friends. There's one that implements the ability to have groups. These can be customized in any number of ways. They're called components. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the ways that you can customize these components to fit your needs. Um, so the easiest, the first thing that you can do, and the easiest thing, is you can go into the dashboard where there are actually some settings for you to turn things on and off. By default, all this stuff is turned on. This first one says activity streams. So let's say that you have a community of, oh boy, what can I say that won't be extremely offensive? Uh, yeah, okay, people who are interested in, let's say, a very strange kind of pornography. And they want to have a community to talk to each other, but they want to keep their stuff a little bit private, so you don't want to share everything with every member of the community. You might want to turn off the activity stream in that sort of way, so you don't see that John posted a blog post about dogs or something like that. Okay, so, but these can be switched on and off, which is very, very sort of nice, very easy to do, very, um, very much at the UI level. Let's say that I don't like some of the more fundamental parts of these components. For instance, the word members. Now, members is the name of one of the components as it comes out of the box. And this is sort of uh, the ability to, the members component helps people to or it, it kind of is a, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's an auxiliary component for things like friendships and groups. But I think the word members is totally lame. In a heavy metal community, I want something that is a little bit more awesome. So, here's what I do. In a file that I'll call bpcustom.php, which I will drop into my plugins directory. 
So plugins directory, create a file called bpcustom.php. Any function or any command, any line of code that you put into bpcustom.php will automatically be activated whenever BuddyPress loads. This is a little bit like the functions.php file inside of a theme. This is probably something that you talked about in the last session. I wasn't here because I was making this. <laughs> so here's what I'm doing inside of bpcustom.php. I'm defining the bp members slug, and the slug is the part of the URL that acts like an argument when BP when BuddyPress parses the, the URL to try and figure out what you what, what page you want to load. So I don't want it to be members, I want it to be headbangers. So now I've gone from lame to totally awesome. Right? So easy. And I can imagine I can already, once you have this kind of flexibility, um, you can start to imagine a lot of different things that you might do outside of the realm of social networking. Um, so the word groups, for instance, sounds very much like something Facebook-y, but if you had a, you might change it to something like clubs, it has a little bit of a different connotation. You might change it to something like classes. Let's say that you had an educational installation and you wanted to set up courses. But once you can start to change things like that, then the possibilities for BuddyPress really start to expand. Next. All I changed right there was the URL. I changed the slug. But I now need to change that text anywhere that it appears on the website. There's a couple ways to do this. Um, and the first way is just to go in and start editing template files. Uh, the problem with this is that um, these words appear in many, many places. The word members, for instance, appears in many places on the website, and it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to go through and change each one. And furthermore, if in the future you want to sort of upgrade to a new version of the parent theme, all of those changes could potentially be overwritten, or you'll have to merge it into your child theme. So, there's a little bit more of a creative way to do this, and it has to do with creating a custom language file. How many of you ever, have ever been involved in an internationalization of a plugin or a WordPress or something like that? Yeah, yeah. So, so the idea is that whenever you have, whenever you, in, in a, if you open up a WordPress um, theme file that's correctly written, you'll see that all, it'll never have just plain text being echoed to the screen. It'll always be echoed through, uh, I don't know the terminology for this, right? But underscore E, and then it'll have it in pre, for a localization domain. And the purpose of this is so that people who speak other languages, let's say French, can, uh, can do an automatic translation. They can create a file that will automatically replace all instances of the word blog with brug, which is French for blog. Um, that's true, actually. Um, so we can take advantage of this internationalization trick by making our own language file that goes through and does all these replacements automatically. That way, we're really future-proofing ourselves and future-proofing our customizations, which is what you always want to do. So the first step, BuddyPress ships with what's called a pop file. This is a sort of machine-readable version of all of the text that's being echoed inside of the BuddyPress set of plugins. You wouldn't want to go through each file because there's many, many of them. There's hundreds of them. So this is a collection of all of them into one place. I copied that pop file to a, a, something in the same folder called buddypress-rock.po because I'm going to call this custom language that I'm creating rock. Or should I say rock? <laughs> so, and then I go through and I find the things that I want to change. Members, I want to change to headbangers. And you can scroll through and you can change a zillion things in there to whatever you want them to be. That's the first step. The second step is that you've got to go back to bpcustom.php and you've got to tell BuddyPress to look at that file. It's just creating the file in and of itself doesn't do anything. You could have 10 different language files in there, but unless you, unless you tell BuddyPress which one you want to load, it's not going to know. So here's what we do in bpcustom.php. First, we define this slug, this, um, this uh, constant, lang, rock. And then we say, if the, if the MO file exists, if the language file exists, then load that particular text domain and call it rock. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Members changes to headbangers here and anywhere else in the in the environment where the word members appeared before. So once again, that seems like quite a few steps, but when you think about how many template files you would have to load and how many changes you would have to make to files that will be updated in the future, this really ends up being a big time saver. Next. Next way we want to customize is by using 
Amy, so how many of you sit, were here for the last session? Oh, good, a good number of you. So I don't need to tell you about child and parents theme relationships, uh, which is good because I'm not that smart about it, but <laughs> um, Bunny Press ships with a theme called BPSN Parents. And um, BPSN Parents stands for Social Networking Parents, uh, but this acts like a sort of uh, skeleton theme for Buddy Press. So the standard setup that I showed you before with the orange is a combination of two theme directories. One is BPSN Parents, which acts as the parent directory, or the parent theme, and the other one is um, BP Default, which is the child theme. And all that really contains is some CSS to change colors. Uh, the, most of the actual markup, um, all the actual markup is contained inside of BPSM Parents. Now, let's talk a little bit about what BuddyPress themes look like. You've already taken a look at some WordPress themes, and you know what those look like. And the good news is that while BuddyPress themes are much bigger, they're not really that different in a fundamental way. Because they contain all of the same files that BuddyPress, that WordPress themes contain. For instance, you'll see on this list, and this is just part of the list, of course, page.php. This is the same page.php that you have inside of a, inside of a WordPress template. Um, sidebar.php. There's an index.php, home.php, and so on. But in addition to those core files, those, those WordPress files, you also have files to handle all the other parts of BuddyPress that extend the core features of WordPress. So you have an entire folder, for instance, devoted to the profile. And you see I've expanded it here. But the, and these folders, you know, they expand, some of them go several levels deep. But they work in basically the same way. You have inside of these, there, just, did you talk about the, the, uh, the post loop in, uh, in the theming talk? There was, a, there was a talk earlier today about it. But there's a post, the post loop is how WordPress sort of is able to iterate through all the posts that you want to show, say, on your front page, on an archive page and tell you exactly what you want the markup to be. So, in the same way that there's post loops in WordPress, there are member loops in uh, BuddyPress, and there are group loops. And it's something like, BP has, if BP has groups, then let's iterate through them. Okay. Let's talk about how we would make a child theme to improve this extremely lame heavy metal website. I'm going to create a child theme. And the way that I do this is I take the BP default theme, which, like I said, is just really a collection of a few CSS files, and I copy it to a new directory. Now, this should be a total repeat of what you just talked about. There's a couple key pieces of metadata inside of this file, header data, that need to be changed in order for the system to recognize that you've got a new theme here. The first one is the name. I've changed it to Buddy Press. The second one is template. Colon. That's, that's where you define the parent theme. And in this case, I didn't have to change anything, but you must make sure that you have defined the correct parent theme, otherwise it won't work. And the last thing that I like to do is to uncomment in the, this line at the bottom here. It says, if you can't read it, uncomment the following line and add your custom styles to a, uh, underscore ink CSS custom.css. And the purpose of this is so that you don't have to go digging through Digging through all of the files that are already in this theme, you can add all of your custom files, all your customizations of the theme, into the custom.css um, directory, custom.css file, which is located last, or it's loaded last in the process. So, that's the first step. Then, you go make some changes. So here, you see I haven't made very many changes, but you'll notice one word stands out on here. Black. <laughs> Now it's totally awesome. <laughs> I changed the theme. I changed the I changed the font into what I think is a really badass font. Um, I changed some things to red. So you can see that with just a couple lines of code and this child theme structure, you can take um, what is a very standard looking buddy press site and change it into something that's quite a bit different. Uh, you'll also notice I changed. Well, did I change it? Let me see. Oh, I guess I didn't. You can also change um, the positioning of various sorts of things, but you already know about that too if you know what CSS. Yes? So if you want to take an existing theme, like a studio press theme, and, mm -hmm. and buddy pressify it, is the easiest thing to do to just write a child to the existing theme? Um, yeah, but you would have to make sure that you, would, that you provided all of the necessary buddy press files in order to do that. There's a little bit of a, um, not with buddy press, or not with studio press, but there, 
I'm trying to think of what the um, framework is that Ron Rennick did, that Ron Rennick built a, a child theme for, a buddy press version for. Yeah, yeah, the one that he showed off at, at uh, WordCamp New York. Well, he, but it, it was, yeah, that's what it was, it was thematic. But so, so that exists. It's a, it's a buddy press parent theme into which you can plug any thematic theme as a child theme, and it will sort of, that sorts itself out. So I don't think that exists for Studio Press, but um, it, could, it could theoretically. All you would need to do is flush out the parent theme with all the necessary buddy press files, and then you would just operate it like you would any other theme. Well, while we're on the subject of themes, actually, I should mention that the next version, this, this, this version of BuddyPress is kind of, um, is going to be supported as a, this, this version of the theme is going to be supported as a sort of legacy version. Uh, the new one uh, that's coming out with BuddyPress 1.2 later this month will be very streamlined in terms of the JavaScript and in terms of the CSS that's included, so um, it'll be very nice. And one thing I didn't put up here, but it's the same sort of, it's the same sort of idea if you want to actually change some of the markup. So th is this something that you talked about during the child theme session? If you, don't, if you want to change something other than just the CSS, let's say I want to change the order in which some of these things on the page appear, that's not something you can do with CSS. You can do it with the markup, though. So you would dig into BPSN parent, find the template that you want to replace, and then copy it over to your child theme, making sure that you keep the directory structure in place. So let's say that I wanted to change the way that the profile page was arranged. I would look for the profile template in, this, in, this, in the parent theme. In this case, it's index.php. Then I would copy this over to my child theme, making sure to keep the directory structure in place. And by that, I mean I would create an empty folder called profile in the child theme, and then I would put the index.php file inside of it. So then when BuddyPress loads themes, it's going to look first inside of the child theme to find, any of the, to find any template files, and they will override the parent template files. So in that way, you can change the markup, make it look however you want it to look. <coughs> Plugins. Cool thing about BuddyPress is that it's, it's extensible, and it's getting more extensible all the time. Um, there's a couple tools that make it really easy to build new parts for BuddyPress. The first one I'll talk about is the Group Extension API. So inside, I didn't take any screenshots of groups. So groups can do, when you form a group in BuddyPress, you can do all sorts of things together. You can have a forum, so a shared discussion board. You can have a shared, um, you have a shared wall, like a Facebook wall, they call it a wire, but you have a shared activity stream. But let's say, for instance, that you want to have a shared blog, one which is automatically populated with, as, with um, all the members of the group as authors. Well, that's not something that's built into BuddyPress, but um, there has been um, a, pl a plugin published using the group extension API that adds a blog extension to all groups. So by group extension API, what makes, this, what makes this so special is that it only takes one relatively small piece of code in order to add a lot of functionality to all of the groups on your system. It's, a, it's one class. And all you have to do is register that class, put all of your, your actual function code inside of the methods, and then, uh, and then plop it into a plugin. Very easy to do. Um, well, relatively, it depends what your plugin is doing, but the API part of it is very easy. Um, another, part, another tool is the skeleton component. So I was telling you before that components are things like forums and things like blogs, things like groups, the very top level items inside of BuddyPress. You can create a whole new one of these. So for instance, there's a plugin out there that allows you to have events. It's called BuddyPress Events. And it, uh, it acts a little bit like a calendar plugin, but it's, a little, it's more than that. It's a community calendar. You can add things to different people's calendars and sort of communicate with each other within your groups. Um, and that adds, that's using the skeleton component. The skeleton is just a plugin that has all the pieces necessary to build a new component with, with like Laura Mipson in it. So you can go in and replace it with whatever you need to replace it with. Next, there are the good old-fashioned hooks and filters. So this is, I wrote a little bit of a plug-in here for BuddyPress that does something extremely cool. 
And here's this is just a, this is just the same as uh, you write a plugin for WordPress. But the idea here is that the hook the hook system and the filter system that BuddyPress uses is very similar in its naming conventions to um, WordPress itself. So if you've got any experience developing plugins for WordPress, then you'll find BuddyPress very easy to develop for. So this one, this one is called function how badass am I? Uh, the first thing it does is it loads this global, this global variable VP, which prints out a whole lot of information about the current page that you're looking at and the current installation of, of BuddyPress. It's very handy because it often contains data that you'll need in many different kinds of applications. And then I define some things like user ID, username, user URL, and then I echo some text. Finally, I add this action. Every time this hook gets called BP before profile field content, I load this function. And here's what it looks like. Boom Gurgis is badass number one on this site because I am user number one on my site. Yes. So that's, that's pretty cool. And it goes really fast. And this, this is getting better and better. The BuddyPress community is pretty small still in terms of its developers. And they're extremely responsive to things like requests for hooks. So if you find a place in BuddyPress where you want to hook in without hacking core code, then if you submit this to one of the developers, a patch will get written in no time. They're very, very nice about that. And so um, it's a cool time to be developing for BuddyPress. Here's links to a couple resources. And like I said, this is up on SlideShare already. But uh, if you're going to start working on BuddyPress, and if you really want to work on customization, these are some good places to start. The codex for BuddyPress is young, and it is incomplete, and it's a bit inconsistent, but it's getting better all the time. So that's a good first place to look. If, for instance, you are curious about taking your WordPress theme that you really love and worked hard on, and you want to turn it into a BuddyPress theme, there's an article about that on the codex, and it's pretty good. There are also articles about starting to build your own components, how to get started with plugins. Very helpful. Next, bodypress.org slash forums. The BuddyPress community, like I said, is small, but very active and very friendly. And so go ask your questions there, and you'll probably get a bunch of free help. Bodypress.org extend plugins. This is a, a place on the BuddyPress page that pulls all of the plugins from the WordPress repository that are labeled BuddyPress. So it's one-stop shopping for all of your BuddyPress plugins. Yes. Done. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. Um, can this be integrated with an existing new site, or would you have to essentially have every blog offer change their theme to something that's like that's enabled? No, great question. Um, this sits on top of a single blog. So the way the way that it works is that um, really what you do when you install BuddyPress, you install it on a single blog, it gets installed formally site site wide but it gets associated with a single blog in the database. So for, for, for Academic Commons, for instance, it's blog number one. And all of your friendships, all of your groups, all of that kind of core BuddyPress stuff happens inside of blog number one from, from WordPress's point of view. All other blogs remain untouched. The one, the one exception to that is that there's a bar that appears at the top of a BuddyPress page. I don't know what it's called, I guess the uh, the admin bar, this gray bar up here, that's loaded at, with WP footer. And so that happens across all blogs. And what it, what it gives you is a, is a way to have, to on the one hand, allow all of your users to keep their blog themes exactly how they are, because they're not really touched by BuddyPress, but still to have this global navigation. It just overlays over the top of every blog on your installation, unless you turn it off. And are there widgets so that you could perhaps have some BuddyPress features in a legacy? Yes. Yeah, the widgets, the widgets are, are built in. Well, there's quite a few widgets built in, and, you can, and it's pretty easy to build more just using the API. But yeah, so like, for instance, it's a site-wide activity widget. And the site-wide activity is filterable based on things like if you only want to see activity that's related to forum posts, or if you only want to see activity related to blog posts. That's a widget that can be dropped on any blog in the system. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so the themes for BuddyPress are completely separate from the Um, well, what, it depends what you mean by separate. Well, uh, in a, well, when you put it, when you implement a buddy pressing in your heavy metal thing, it, mm -hmm. it had a completely different look. So that tells me that it's got a completely different theme. Yes. File in a different. Place. That's right. 
That's right. Once you activate a buddy press, once you activate buddy press on the buddy press blog of your system, blog number one, then it um, that theme you have to activate a buddy press enabled theme on that blog in order for buddy press to work at all. Otherwise, all the all the buttons that you need to act to access buddy press functions won't exist. So yes, you do have to do that. It's pretty easy to merge it together. All you would do is take all of the files that are all the files from the um, from the, the WordPress theme and kind of merge them into the BuddyPress theme. You would take the default BuddyPress theme and merge those WordPress theme files into it. And there might be some places where you have to include an extra function or something like that. But, but yeah, the, the answer is yes. It does take over your blog's theme. And so it can take a little bit of theming work to get that to look the right way when you first start off with BuddyPress. So only the BuddyPress blog. That's correct. Right. Can this integrate with Facebook Connect and sign me in with Twitter? Um, it does integrate with Facebook Connect. Um, I have never really played with it a lot, but I know there's a plugin out there that allows you to do it. And I think it will even do things like, um, I'm not sure how good it is about things like finding canonical IDs for people. So if it, let's say, gets my friend list from, from Facebook, if it can find friends who also have identification inside of my WordPress installation, I think it tries, but I don't know how good it is. Um, I don't know about like Olaf. I, I, I mean, if, that, if that's what you're talking about, because I think that that just is, um, authentication for BuddyPress is just handled by WordPress. So whatever plugin you could find for authenticating through OAuth for Buddy for WordPress should work here too. Yeah, please. Um, you said the BuddyPress that's in Trunk works with regular WordPress yeah. now? Is that the 2.9.1 or is that the WordPress that's in Trunk? No, I mean the BuddyPress in Trunk. So BuddyPress right now is at version 1.1. Three. Version 1.2 will work with any installation of, of WordPress, whether or not it's WordPress multi-user. If you want that functionality right now and you're willing to live on the edge, you can get the development version of BuddyPress from BuddyPress.org. Yeah. You said when you install the BuddyPress, uh, I mean, when you install, it takes over the theme on blog one. Yeah. Now, if you do it on a single WordPress install, is it going to take over the theme of that blog? Yeah. Yeah, well, and it's, and it's a bit of a pain. But to be honest, it's a bit of a pain to begin with, but it's not a pain in the long run. But that's, this is a new thing. With, it started with version 1.1, I believe. Version 1.0 of BuddyPress allowed you to keep your main blog's original BuddyPress theme. But that meant that if you wanted to update your theme, let's say you wanted to change something in the header, you needed to do it both in the, in the WordPress blog, or the WordPress theme, and in the BuddyPress theme. But now they're the same thing. So it really cuts down on your work in the long run. But it can be a real pain to integrate in the first place. Are there significant changes between 1.1.3 and 1.2 where if you had not, not previously even touched a BuddyPress project, would you recommend waiting to 1.2 or should you start now and then the um, upgrade 1.2 won't be that painful? Well, the functionality doesn't change very much. Um, the theming will change a little bit in the sense that this old theme, uh, BuddyPress BP default is going to be called BuddyPress Classic, and the new BP default is a very streamlined version of this with a little bit of a different architecture, just in terms of the way the buttons are laid out, menus, and stuff like that. So, if you are planning to put a lot of work into theming, you should definitely have a look at the at the uh, one one point two alpha trunk theme, just to make sure that see whether you want to use that one or whether you want to use BP Classic in terms of functionality. The BuddyPress team has been extremely good about thinking about backwards compatibility. So um, you're not going to have any problems with things breaking when you upgrade to 1.2. Yes, please. I have a, I have a site that has uh, WordPress and BBPress. Yeah. Is it going to be easy to go from a BBPress install to BuddyPress? Well, that's a complicated question. <laughs> um, yeah, the, yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, so the way that forms work inside of inside of BuddyPress is a little bit wonky. Um, forums are embedded in groups. So you know how in BBPress you can have a form, the top level is a form, and underneath that you have topics. And so in, in BuddyPress, the way the, the way that BuddyPress implements BBPress is that each group has a forum. And there's no such thing as a forum that does not exist within a group. So you can't have a, just a simple open forum on your site. All forums are gotten to from inside of a particular group. So if you have if you have forums that are like that, like let's say a help forum that isn't really part of any of the other forums, you would need to first associate it with a group if you wanted to show up 
inside of the new installation. And depending on how you have BBPress installed in terms of where your database is located and how your tables are named, you may have to do some merges or some changes to your database before you, before you do the upgrade. But for people who have, who have never done an installation, it's a one, in order to get BBPress installed, it's literally one button. You press install, and then it's there. So that's all the code file, and it sets up the database tables. So that's why I say if you've already got an installation and if you, you use something non-standard for, for naming the database tables, you may have to do some playing around. But it's really not hard. I had to do it myself on the Academic Commons about two months ago. And I got really nervous about it, but it went fine. And that's actually something I wrote up on my blog not long ago. I wrote up a description of how the process went. Oh, I don't have it on here. No. You can get it from my Twitter page. I, I wrote up a long thing about how, I, about how the process went, upgrading from 1.0 or 1.0 to 1.1. And that was a big part of it, so that might be helpful. Yeah. Uh, have you seen any good examples of really thriving BuddyPress communities? Um, well, the, I would say the most thriving BuddyPress community is on BuddyPress.org. Um, <laughs> it's, it's funny, a lot of people ask inside of BuddyPress forums, how do I know this is going to scale? And people get on and say, you're using it right now. There's tens of thousands of active users. And in WordPress, I mean, it, that runs with the same user base as WordPress.org, which has millions of users, right? So um, that's, the, that's the number one one, I would say. Um, I don't know of a lot of places that are using really, that have a really thriving open community. The thing about BuddyPress is that it's a very cheap and easy way to start a, very, a, like a niche website. And a lot of those aren't open. So I know people, for instance, who are using it for educational purposes. But you, and it may or may not be thriving, but there's no way you can tell because it's often kind of locked off. So only members can access certain parts of it. I know that it's been used commercially in some cases. Not long ago, Volkswagen had a, had a site, I don't even remember what it was for, but it, was, but it implemented social networking features. It was powered by BuddyPress. Yeah, I saw that, but it looked like it only had about 30 or 40 members. Yeah. Well, that's how those commercial things go sometimes. Yeah, so the answer is I don't really know. The Academic Commons, I mean, not to toot my own horn, but, it's, but it actually is a pretty thriving community as far as BuddyPress communities go. And I think that a few months from now, once we start pushing in our campuses, we'll have thousands of users. I don't know of a lot of other body press communities out there that have that many. How much admin control is there? Um, well, not, not as much as I wish there were. Um, a lot of the admin control over forums is ported in for body press. So if you need to go in and label a sticky, or if you need to delete or edit forum posts, that's easy to do. Um, the other stuff, things like group membership, is very difficult. So as an admin of an installation, it would be nice for me to go into the back end and add Sally to the group about Metallica, <coughs> but it's kind of hard for me to do that. You, you kind of can't right now without using some custom plugins. So, but that, but it's getting better. I mean, these things are being implemented little by little. So, um, it depends what kind of admin, what kind of admin thing you're looking for. Yes. So, you already had a blog up and you wanted to continue with that. Yes. You could do that. I never thought of that. But you, that, couldn't, that wouldn't be it. Because every time, I mean, you have to use the blog in which BuddyPress is installed because that's where all the social networking things actually happen. Say you want to incorporate part of the social networking, uh -huh. you want the whole, like, you want your whole site to be right. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, you, you could do that. But every time somebody clicked on a group, for instance, it would take them to a page that is located on the BuddyPress blog. So if you, if you don't mind those being very separate experiences in terms of themes, then yeah, you can absolutely do that. You could and just keep your blog as the main page. Like what you're saying, it takes over. Yeah, right. So that would be kind of fixed at this time. Yeah, unless you wanted to incorporate the theme into a BuddyPress theme. That's right. In what sense does it allow you to incorporate it? Right. Well, we can look at it. I mean, if you want, if you actually want to sit down and look at it, like after this, we can we can sit down and look at it. So, I mean, this is the sad truth. The sad truth is that when you first install BuddyPress, it's a pain in the ass because I mean, you have to integrate all of these things and make it look good. Um, so, unfortunately, there's no way around that. Yeah. Oh, got, we got like five minutes left. If anyone has a question, otherwise, you don't have to ask. Much. When did they? One point two is at the end of the month. Right? End of the month. That's right. 
So, I mean, if you're really going to embark on a huge buddy press project, then it might be worth your while to wait. You know, set that development version up in a, in a sort of development environment and play with it until the Well, thanks a lot, guys.